Welcome back to another edition of Components Breakdown. Today we're going to look at a very fun little game called The Downfall of Pompeii. The Downfall of Pompeii intrigued me for quite some time and it, I didn't really know what components were included inside and I got some idea from the pictures that were included on BGG but I never really felt that I had enough uh, information before I bought the game so the reason why I'm doing this one is because I find it to be really enjoyable, a very simplistic game but with some, deep, some deeper strategy and a little bit of luck in there as well which makes for an exciting game. Uh, the Downfall of Pompeii is a two to four player hand management and tile placement game and it takes place over two different phases. The theme of the game is that in 63 AD um, there was an earthquake in the city of Pompeii that made a lot of its um, citizens flee the city. And then between that and 79 AD um, the city really began to prosper so a lot of people were coming back into the city. So the game takes place over two different phases. Phase one is actually you repopulating the city between the year 63 and 79 AD. And the second phase is when the volcano erupts and everyone fleeing the city um, to see whoever has the most people that get out of the city winning. So with that let's open up the box and look at the components and see if it's something you might be interested in. So the first thing we're going to show you inside the box is the rule book. It's a very small eight page rule book. Very simple to understand the rules. It is a simplistic game with a little bit of strategy mixed in and some luck but not a whole lot. Um, the rules are very simple to understand. There's a plenty of examples in here to give you um, some of the, the harder to understand things such as the wild cards and the relatives rule but we'll get into that once we go through the gameplay. It ships with a plastic very sturdy plastic volcano that's simply put together as such and there you have your volcano piece. It ships with a smaller board with a hole that's cut out for the volcano to fit in and we'll go through the board in a moment as well so we'll set that aside. Um, the insert is a very nice insert actually but there's not a whole lot of use for it because I use a Plano box to store all my pieces. Usually they're stored in these um, and then it comes with a nice red cloth back which are used for all the tile pieces. Um, it ships with a deck of cards and this is the cutout piece from the volcano which I simply kept. So with that let's set up a two player game and show you how the game works. So now you see all the components laid out in front of you. We're going to go through them in a little more detail and then get into the actual gameplay mechanics themselves. So the first thing you're going to notice is the board and on the board you have the location for the volcano and then you have all the different buildings within, within the city itself and they are numbered 1 through 11 and they go in a line pattern across the board. Um, each of the buildings are color coordinated with numbers and the ones that are not are just simply called neutral, um, neutral buildings. Now there's also locations with different icons and this is where the um, lava will start or originate and start flowing into the city and then there's numerous gates that outline the city where people can get out once the volcano erupts. So with that let's actually get into the other components in the game. Um, they ship with several different people tokens and there's four different colors and looking at here the black and the red are used for a two player and then the yellow is introduced for a three player and the four is introduced for a four player and the reason because of that is because you use less people in a three player game and even fewer people in a four player game and they've only included enough tokens for those individual ones. And the last thing we're going to cover are the cards themselves. Now the cards come in a, three different fashions. There are 53 total Pompeii cards and these are the ones with the people and the color coordination and the small icons on the bottom. Now each of these come in different numbers depicting what building they go to. The color and on the bottom just says how many of these number nine cards there are. So there's six of these eights and three of these sevens. There are seven omen cards that are um, put into the deck and these allow the player to put one of the opponent's players of any choice into the volcano. So basically it's chucking one of their um, players or sacrificing one of their players to the volcano. And there are two of these 89 or 8079 cards that depict um, the early warning of the eruption and the actual eruption itself. So with that let's actually get to the gameplay and show you both of the two phases. So the first thing that happens when you start playing the game is that the deck is constructed. Now it's constructed in such a way that the omen cards are mixed in at a specific number and the eruption of 
uh, Vesuvius is mixed in at a certain area in the game. So everyone's going to be able to play enough um, people into the city before it erupts. Now, it's, there's obviously some chance and some variation in the way the deck is organized, but the deck has to be set up. So when the game first starts, the starting player is simply going to look at one of his cards and say, for instance, he's going to use the 10, and he can place that a person in that 10 building. So he simply takes one of his tokens and places it on either one of these two areas within that 10 building. And then he simply discards the card, and he draws a new card to replace it. And this goes back and forth um, until omen cards. If omen cards are drawn, you simply chuck one of their people into the volcano, any one of your choice, and draw a new card to replace to go back up to four cards. So what you're doing the whole time is you're populating the city, and you usually want to populate areas that are closest to the exit so people can get out as quickly as possible. Now, there is an additional rule in here called the, called the relative rule. When the relative rule comes into play, it's simply when you play a card where there's already people in that area, so say for instance on the following turn he played the 10 again, and there's already one black token in this building, he simply places his first one, and since there's one token in there already, he can either place it in that same building on another side of the building, or he can place it in another brown building of his choice, or he can place it in any neutral building that doesn't have a color system. And the more relatives in an area, say for instance, there were two black ones in here, and he played a brown card again, and he played it in the tin building, but now there were two in there prior, so he could place two more people. So the relative rules allows you to place more characters quickly or more people quickly into the city and populate it. Once the second 79 AD card is drawn, that's when the volcano erupts and a completely different phase of the game takes place. And what we're going to do now is we're going to populate the board as if uh, the volcano erupted and we're going to show you phase two. So now phase two of the game begins and that's when the second 79 AD card is drawn. All the cards are then removed from the table, and now it's a race to see if you can get as many citizens out of the gates of Pompeii um, before the lava comes in and destroys them. And that's taken place, um, or takes place with the use of the tiles that are provided in the game. There are six different types of tiles, and we'll zoom in here to show you what they look like. The tiles have an icon in the upper right hand corner that represent a specific space on the map. And you see there's six different icons down here. If we look at one of the icons, say for instance, um, we look at the pillar icon here. It matches the location right there. So when this pillar icon is drawn, it's simply placed on that location. When a new one is, is drawn, it has to be placed orthogonally to the one that's already been placed. So you cannot place them diagonally, only next to them or adjacent to them. And the idea here is to try to um, kill your opponents, lay lava on top of them, and try to block off gates that are being used by a specific area of the board. Say for instance if all your black tokens are down here and red usually has them up there, you want to try to block off those exits so they have a further place to travel. Now how this phase of the game works is that you're going to be drawing one tile every turn and then you're going to be moving your people out of the city. Movement happens uh, a couple different ways. If you're on a location by yourself so for instance, this black token, he's allowed to move twice, so he's allowed to move two spaces. Um, if you're on a location with multiple people, you're only allowed to move once, but you can move however many people are on there. So, Say, for instance, there's three people here, he can move three times, so he can go one, two, and then go outside the gates. So the idea here is to try to get as many people out of the city as you can as quickly as possible so that the lava doesn't catch up and kill your people. So the end of the game happens in a couple different ways. It can either end when um, all the citizens have been removed from the city of Pompeii, if all the citizens have been killed, or if the last tile from the red bag has been drawn. And that will also end the game. The person that has the most citizens rescued will win. In the case of a tie, the person with the fewest number of sacrificed people in the volcano will win. So what do I think of the game? I think it's actually quite nice. It, it's very easy to set up. It's a quick play. It's almost a filler game in the fact that it takes only about 30 to 45 minutes to play. Um, it's great for two players and equally as good for four players. So it scales really well. Um, it's fairly cheap to buy. So I, I think I can't recommend this game enough. It, it's a very simple game to play. It's not something that you're going to find really deep strategy in. There's some luck, but there's a really good fun factor in the game, which a game like this 
really needs and, and there's a lot of fun to be had in this game it, it's exciting to play it's easy to play and there's always joy from chucking people's uh, people in the volcano so um, that's Pompeii and I hope you guys like watching this and I would suggest getting it thanks for watching